So let me invite you to a journey into a new world without gravity. Without gravity, objects would just seem to be floating around us in midair. And while this may seem as fun for a second, let's just contemplate the implications. Four billion years ago, rocks would not have collided to create the Earth. So the Earth would simply not exist. Neither would the moon, nor any planet, neither would the sun. There would be no star and no galaxy in the whole universe. Carbon, oxygen, water, none of the elements we're made of would exist, as they wouldn't have been synthesized in stars. So we would simply not exist, at least not in our present form. The universe itself would be very different. Without gravity, the universe would have likely remained as a boiling soup of fundamental particles at trillions of degrees. Without gravity, the universe would be very different. And if we take Einstein's perspective, the very notion of gravity is related to that of space and time themselves. So a world without gravity may well be a world without space, a world without time. So let's go back to our word with gravity. Still taking Einstein's perspective, the notion of gravity is related to that of curvature of space-time. And massive objects, like the sun or the earth, curve space around them. And if we could zoom into this curved space, we would see that at this very moment, every single one of us is exchanging virtual gravity waves with the Earth. We cannot catch them, that's why we call them virtual, but they are there nonetheless. And it's through this exchange that we feel the gravitational attraction to the Earth. And actually, this exchange is present and active between any two objects in the universe. Every second, you and me are exchanging countless number of virtual gravity waves. I may never have seen you before. I may never see you again. And yet you and me are forever connected through this constant exchange of gravity waves. And this exchange links any two objects in the universe. Between you and me, between you and your neighbor, between you and anyone else on the planet and anything else in the universe. And this is not some type of fantasy I'm imagining for you today. This is the very way we understand gravity. And we understand gravity so well that we can predict the motion of the moon around the Earth within a millimeter precision. And this is in such impeccable agreement with observations that if we wanted to do any better, we would need to account for the leaves growing on the trees in the spring and falling down to the surface of the Earth in the fall and changing ever so slightly the gravitational shape of the Earth and changing ever so slightly the motion of the moon around the Earth. We understand gravity so well that we can look at distant stars spinning around each other some 21,000 light years away from us and predict that these two stars should get closer to one another at a rate of less than an inch per year. And that, again, is in impeccable agreement with observations and a direct confirmation that gravity waves really do exist. And while this may seem abstract, I can guarantee that every single one of us here today does care and does use this level of accuracy in our understanding of gravity. While we spend one hour on the surface of the Earth, GPS satellites on orbit 12,000 miles above our head fill one hour and a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more, 1.5 microseconds more to be exact. That's 0.0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.15 seconds more. This is a ridiculously small. And yet, this very subtle difference due to effects of gravity, if not accounted for, would accumulate and GPS devices would give you positions which would be miles away from the correct ones. So if you got here today using a GPS device, I can guarantee you would not have found the right place had your device not computed these very subtle corrections from general relativity. But just contemplate the fact that we're dealing with the position, our position on the surface of the Earth here. And the GPS satellites are normally just above our head. If we already need to account for this level of accuracy in our understanding of gravity, to understand our position on the surface of the Earth, just imagine the level of accuracy we need to reach to understand our position in the galaxy. And if you're like me, interested in the universe, and 
and understand what the universe is made of and how it has evolved to be as it is today. Just appreciate the level of accuracy we need to reach in our understanding of gravity to find our place in the universe, find our origin, and find our fate. And what greater question is there? And actually, when we zoom to cosmological scales, we already have direct evidence that gravity is behaving in very unexpected and intriguing ways. Rather than galaxies moving away from one another more slowly due to the force of gravity, as we would have expected, we see that they're receding from one another faster and faster. The expansion of the whole universe is not slowing down, it's accelerating. And this is possibly one of the most puzzling observations of modern physics. This observation is puzzling because in Einstein theory of gravity, objects are connected gravitationally no matter how far away they are from one another. We say that gravity has an infinite range. And so we would have expected the gravitational pull between galaxies to make the expansion of the, the, the universe slow down. In Einstein theory of gravity, objects located on the other side of the universe, that is 10 to the 22 miles away from here, that's 10,000 million trillion miles away from here, still feel some gravitational connection like you and me. This is remarkable in Einstein theory of gravity, even extraordinary. But maybe this is simply too much to ask. Could it be that this gravitational connection that we share, you and me, and that we share with the Earth, only occurs because we're sufficiently close to one another? Could it be that we stop connecting with objects which are sufficiently far away from us, like on the other side of the universe? Well, this is a very natural possibility and one that my collaborators and I have been exploring. And of course, we're not the first ones to think about that. Newton himself contemplated the possibility that gravity could behave differently at very large distances. And Laplace after him, and Lacombe after him, and many amazing scientists since then. But this seemingly innocent possibility has always been entirely refuted. And not because it would contradict observations, actually it could even help explaining some of the observations, but rather because it has been impossible to make sense of it theoretically. If you look at the literature on the subject, this is what you will read. No way, it doesn't work. Instabilities, and my favorite one is possibly plagued by a ghost. <laughs> and a ghost is possibly the most terrifying thing one can ever imagine. A ghost instability is the worst instability we can know of. So we're used to instabilities, Balancing rocks on top of one another, it's quite an unstable thing to do, and we simply need to push the structure and the whole rocks would fall apart. Stairs are also unstable situations. We may have fallen down the stairs once or twice in our lives. But just imagine if these stairs had no end and would just disappear, come out of their existence, just like that. Imagine, in an instant, all the particles of your body, all the particles of the Earth, all the particles of the whole universe disappearing, decaying, coming out of the existence. This is what being plagued by a ghost would be. It would be the most terrifying thing you could ever imagine. And if our theory for gravity, our theory for the very nature of space and time, predicted such an instability, we wouldn't know how to make sense of anything anymore. And so for decades, it was thought that the absolutely only possibility to avoid such a pathology was for the force of gravity to have an infinite range and for objects to remain connected gravitationally no matter how far away they would be from one another. And that mantra is something I myself have repeated in the past. But when looking at potential alternatives with our colleagues, we realized that there could potentially be more to the story than what we had originally anticipated. And while it is true that this ghost is always there, it's actually possible to drop it a bit like this. <laughs> In reality, this trap looks more like Penrose stairs, where it's possible to trap the ghost in a constrained space, so it cannot make you fall anywhere, and it can do no harm. And so having taken care of this ghost instability pathology, we can now truly investigate the possibility that the force of gravity has a finite range and its implications. In Einstein's theory of gravity, we need to postulate a new type of energy, which we call dark energy, 
to explain the fact that galaxies are receding from one another at an accelerating rate. This energy is unlike any type of matter or radiation that we know of, and yet it dominates the energy budget of the universe. And this needs to be there to explain the fact that galaxies are receding from one another despite the attractive force between galaxies. But if, as I argued, the force of gravity could in principle have a finite range, we may not need to postulate the existence of this dark energy, and the evolution of the universe may appear as much more natural. And while this may seem abstract, it could come with its own set of signatures. And one of them would be on the speed of gravity. So we, you may be familiar with the notion of speed of light, the fact that light travels at a finite speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. Well, so does gravity. Gravity travels at, at a finite speed, and in Einstein's theory of gravity, we believe it has the same speed as light. But this has never been measured, so we don't know for sure. To appreciate the notion of speed of gravity, let's look at the planets in the solar system. They spin around the Earth thanks to the, to the force of gravity. And if we were to remove, sorry, they spin around the sun, thanks to the force of gravity. And if we were to remove the sun, we think they would follow a straight line, and we think it would take three minutes for Mercury, six minutes for Venus, and eight minutes for the Earth to realize that the sun is gone and start changing trajectory. Or at least this is based on Einstein's theory of gravity. But of course, this has never been done, so we don't know for sure. <laughs> and probably we shouldn't do it. <laughs> but if gravity had a finite range, it would also be slower. And so it might take a tiny bit longer for the planets to realize the sun is gone and start changing their trajectory. And while we can't do this, what we may be able to do is measure the speed of gravity waves coming from other objects. So you're probably familiar with the notion of waves, for instance, on the surface of water. Well, gravity waves are not so dissimilar, but they live on the fabric of space-time. And I mentioned both you and me are generating gravity waves, a very tiny one. To see bigger ones, we should look at bigger objects, more massive objects, like spinning, sun, uh, spinning stars or black holes. And the gravity waves generated by these objects would distort a notion of space and distances. So by making very precise measurements here on Earth, we may be able to detect these gravity waves. But if gravity was slower than light, the signal we would receive from these objects through light would come before the signal we receive from this object from gravity waves. So there would be, there could be, a slight time delay in the time of arrival of a detection when we see these objects with our eyes or with our telescope and when we feel these objects with interferometers through the gravitational waves. And throughout the planet, Thousands of amazing scientists are dedicated to observing gravity waves. And if, and that's a great if, but if they observe a tiny, tiny delay in the arrival time of gravity waves, no matter how small, that inner signal will be a smoking gun signature for a new theory of gravity. That innocent little signal detected using 2.5 miles laser interferometers here on Earth would have unprecedented implications for the understanding of our whole universe and for the understanding of gravity on a very fundamental level. This very signal could tell us whether or not the universe is filled with some strange type of dark energy fluid. And observations from these gravity waves here on Earth could tell us if and how we connect with others on the other side of the universe some 10,000 million trillions miles away from here. Thank you. <laughs>